This channel is part of the History Hit Network. April 1st, and it's freezing outside, but I'm here to celebrate the Spring Festival. Ever heard of kimonos, Japanese tea ceremonies, or samurais? They're all part of the Shinto religion and their way of life. And I'm about to meet a Shinto teen who's going to teach me more. And pass the cup. Hmm. Who believes in heaven? All right, ladies. We have a ritual called awakening. Oh, ow. Witches don't use sugar cubes. Today we're going to have a powwow. Whoa, Nelly. What is all of this? This is the rock that Mohammed rose to heaven. Yeah. Huh. It sucks being dead. Um, um, ah. Uh, when you say tablets, you mean the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses are actually sitting there. <laughs> and I think I'm onto something. Oh. It's the busiest day of the year at the Japanese Cultural Center, and I'm about to start my journey into Shintoism. Hello. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I'm Tevya. I'm Olivia. We're celebrating Haru Matsuri. Haru Matsuri. Yes, it means spring festival. Here, this is for you. Is this for me? Yes. Now, what is this? This is a men's kimono. So you want to tie it around your waist like a sash. Okay. Yes. There you go. Do all men wear the kimonos in Japan? Uh, in modern times, no. Everyone just wears, like, you know, jeans, t-shirt. But back in the day, it was always a common clothing. With my kimono tightly secured, it was now off with Olivia to investigate the sights and sounds of Shintoism. Check this out. What is all this? Well, this is a, a mixture between the Spring Festival and also Girls' Day, Hina Matsuri Doll Festival. So basically in Shinto, uh, we pray for the girls' happiness, safety, and we put these dolls up as a special decoration and uh, kind of like asking the gods to help the girls. Why is this so important? Well, uh, in Shinto, spring is about renewal, so it's really like important to Japanese culture. But there's also hundreds of people that are not Japanese. Yes. I thought everybody would be Japanese here. How come there's non-Japanese who come out? Anyone can be Shinto because it's more like a way of life. We honor nature, revere the deities and spirits in nature. So um, it doesn't matter what your race is as long as you have that respect. You're Shinto. So even though I'm not Japanese, I could be Shinto if I want to. Yes. Cool. What am I going to see now? So now we're going to go see the taiko drums. Let's go. The taiko drumming ceremony that Olivia was about to take me to is not only the biggest event of the whole festival, it is a ritual that's been central to Japanese culture for over 1,600 years. I just saw the Shinto taiko drummers and I am blown away. Lucky for me, I'm about to get a tutorial. Wow, that was amazing. What's the deal with the drumming? Why is it so important? So drumming in Shinto ceremony, especially taiko drumming, it has a lot of deep origins and basically what we do it is to call the gods down to hear our prayers. So the drumming is calling the gods? Yes. 
Wow. All right, let's go give him a call. All right. Let's go. History Hit is a streaming platform that is just for history fans, with fantastic documentaries covering fascinating figures and moments in history from all over the world. There is a great collection of religious history content available to History Hit subscribers, from the Crusades to the birth of Islam. There are plenty of topics to choose from for your next documentary fix. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now, just be sure to use the code PARABLE at checkout. I'm Tevya. I'm Chiharu. Hi, Chiharu. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Connor. My first taiko drumming lesson, proper posture. So your left feet should be here, okay. and your right should be in the back. Like that? Yes. Okay, so, so at least you have a yeah. firm stance. Of stance. Okay. okay. You would put your hand up, uh, straight up. Okay. Sorry, straight up, and yep. then you. Yes, but. Uh, you had to put it, hold it there. Oh. Yes, but like that. Yeah. For the echo, because you want the echo. Yes. Now, hold on. I saw Connor downstairs. He would do this and then, like, have his arm up. Like, there's all this, like, theatrics yes. stuff going on. Right. Can I learn that too? Sure. Okay. Gods, you have to show that your face and everything to show that you're doing it. So make sure that your back is straight. Do the gods give points for effort? We'll try, yeah. And then try hitting it again. Good. Hello, gods, it's, it's Tevya calling. <laughs> Eight for effort. Okay, so it's dong. How do you say my back is killing me in Japanese? Senaka ga itai desu. Okay. <laughs> sure. Got it. After drumming to call the gods, next I was off to see the Shinto altar. Here's my next question. Mm -hmm. What is that? Oh. Oh, so far on my journey into the world of Shintoism. Here, this is for you. Is this for me? I've tried on a traditional Japanese kimono, learned how the springtime is central to this religion. I even called on the gods through a 1,600-year-old drumming ceremony. How do you say my back is killing me in Japanese? Which really did a number on my spine. Oh, wow, that's good. I've been learning a lot about Shintoism, but I want to go deeper. So I'm going to meet up with Olivia again, and we're going to meet one of their religious leaders so I can learn more about Shintoism. Let's go! <music> Olivia took me to meet and greet through a ritualistic bow, Reverend Kishi. he would explain why this shrine to the Kami is so sacred to Shintoism. Who is all this for? Name is Tenchi Kane no Kami. Very Ten long time. Tenchi means universe. Okay. Kami is not visible, but the uh, universe itself is the Kami. Did Kami create the universe? Yes. Okay. Followers of Shinto worldwide believe the world is created, inhabited, and ruled by the kami. But to explain what the kami is, is difficult for even them. Because kami is a spiritual essence, the life energy that resides in all of nature, humans, animals, and even physical objects, like rocks. Am I allowed to go closer? Am I allowed sure. up here? Sure. Now, am, can I touch this? Yes. Okay. Now there's water in here. Yes, it is. How come? Uh, I offer water okay. 
every morning. Yeah. Because the water is a uh, very important food okay. to sustain our life. Each of these ornate pots, these flowers, and even the candles on this altar represent the kami, the life energy of nature. Can you tell me why nature is so important in the Shinto religion? Mm -hmm. Because we are part of nature. Yeah. That's why. That's it? Yes. Really? Yes. Another of the natural world's rituals of Shintoism also relates to rice, an important food staple of the Japanese. It symbolizes the universe and the prosperity in it. And since the sun brings rice, the sun's goddess, Amaterasu, is the most revered deity in Shintoism. Each year, a rice pounding ceremony transpires, where a single grain of rice is pounded and mixed with millions of others, binding both the positive and negative forces of the universe. So important is Shintoism's connection to nature that once a year, at their grand ceremony, believers come with gifts of food and perform dances in gratitude to the kami. But it turns out that nature is also about the life cycle and that death also plays a major role at the other part of the Shinto altar. Mitama spirits. Yes. What does that mean? It, it is. Mitama is spirits in Japanese. Oh. Okay. So mitama means spirits. Mm -hmm. So this altar is for the spirits. Yes. The spirits of whom? Ancestral. Oh. Okay. And uh, friends or whoever passed away. So when a believer of Shintoism mm -hmm. dies, mm -hmm. this is where you come to pay respects to their spirit. Yes. Oh, okay. Here's my next question. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that your office? Oh. <laughs> this is the mediation place. Any people come there to talk about problems or uh, happiness or whatever and uh, mediate their wish to come in and uh, give the message coming to the people. Now it was my turn to speak to the kami through the reverend, of course. So today, if you have any request? I do. Yeah, Would I you... will pray for you. Can you explain to me what the meaning of my life is? To become a kami. The human life is the, to become one with kami. Then uh, to help others and to work as a part of coming. That is your purpose of life, everyone. Well, thank you for that. Now next, I will do the purification rite for you. Next, it was the Reverend's turn to purify our hearts and minds with this wooden staff. The waving of this wand and its white paper is meant to attract the spirits. Let us bow our heads to receive this purification rite to symbolically cleanse our hearts and minds. He would not only purify us, but the space we're in and even our cameras. But I was about to learn that for true believers of Shintoism, that the purification of the mind and heart goes even further than at this altar. Tea, anyone? Oh. So far on my journey into the world of Shintoism, I had not only called their god, the Kami. Yay! Wow. I also witnessed firsthand just how important nature and purity is to the religion. 
but I bet you couldn't guess where my next taste, or maybe I should say drink, of Shintoism would come from. Now I know you think I'm probably somewhere in Japan, but you'd be wrong. I'm actually somewhere in the suburbs, and I'm visiting a tea teacher. And she's turned her entire house into a series of tea rooms. That's right. The art of both making and serving tea is an ancient ritual, both in Japan and in Shintoism. And I was about to learn just how sacred this practice is for Mrs. Shin, who has spent decades teaching the art of the tea ceremony, and who has trained this student to perfection. And like all of Shintoism, the first thing I learned in this small tea room is that it all comes down to purification of the heart and mind. The idea is to be at one with your thoughts and in the moment with the person who is serving the tea. This room is just us. Three of us are one universe. When you enter the room, you leave the everything's outside the world, nothingness, no malices, no talk, and no shopping things. It just, I'm here to drink the tea. It's just this, I'm here to make the tea for us. Nothing else. A sweet, tiny biscuit is also served to take away the slightly bitter taste of the tea. I passed you. Okay, for me? Since... No, you could pick up. I'm gonna choose the biggest, because I'm kind of a pig. <laughs> no, so sweet. Okay. Do I get to have mine too? Good. Not good? It's just mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. The preparation of the tea is precise. The idea is to cherish this exact moment and the gift of this cup. The lesson here is to appreciate the small things and take nothing for granted. She selected this table for us. Yeah. So we have to treasure that and says, oh, Maybe you says, oh, this table, it's only dollar. I think it's not the point. Well, not the, it's that it was chosen specifically for you. For, for you and I. It's amazing that this tea ritual has been going on for a thousand years. I want to say thank you. It's not the only ancient tradition of Shintoism. My next stage was to meet a master of the art of the Japanese sword. That's right, Olivia was about to introduce me to a kajutsu master. Hello. Hello. So, Tevya, this is Tong Sensei. Hajime wa shite. Hajime Very nice to meet you. <laughs> now, what does sensei mean? Sensei means teacher in Japanese, or sometimes it means uh, someone who came before you. Oh, OK. And usually they're there to instruct you or teach you the way now, what is going on over here? Uh, this is actually called Kenjutsu. Kenjutsu is kind of a generic term that relates uh, to all types of uh, old styles of Japanese swordsmanship. The style that they're learning right now is called Katori Shinto Ryu. Kat say that again? Katori. Katori. Shinto. Shinto. Ryu. Ryu. Yeah, and that means... Um, it sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Ryu actually means style, and um, Katori is the name of the region that it came from. And Shinto, Shin means God, and To is uh, Do, which means way, the way of the God of Katori. Shin means God? Yeah. Wow, okay. Let's get you in a uniform. All right. Yeah. Now, what is this exactly? This is called a Keikogi. Keikogi. Uh, Keikogi. Yeah. Okay. Keiko means practice, and Gi means uniform. Okay, yeah, so do I take all this off and then put this on over it? Yes, you do. And it kind of signifies when, when, when you change into your uniform for class, you kind of leave your worldly 
cares behind. Right. I'll be right back. Great. I was off to put on my kagogi, and now I was ready. Hi. How do I look? You look fine. Um, but first things first, we don't sit like that. So you're going to have to get back up. OK. And you're going to sit in the seiza. Good. And we sit down on our knees. And, yeah, okay. so we sit. Like this here? Yep. Sit down. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Keep back you hear straight. my legs crack? Keep back straight. <sighs> yeah. And this is a very uh, traditional posture that the samurai and the old Japanese uh, traditionally sit in. Uh, before we do anything, we have to bow to the god. Yeah. So, because the god is infused in the style. So we have to pay respect to the god. What god are we praying to? We are actually praying to the patron god of the Katori Shrine, and his name is Futsunushi. Futsunishi. 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 Yes. I would learn that for Shintos, one must first bow and then clap twice to alert the gods to our presence. And then the last step to pay respect to the sensei himself. Sensei ni rei. Onegashimasu. Now it was my turn to try one of the weapons of the samurai. Put it out in front of us. We don't actually have to hit the person, but we have to work on our form. But I could stab him. In a manner of speaking, yes. I could stab him for real or metaphorically? Metaphorically. Oh, I see. OK. Yep. Okay, keep your back straight, and you're gonna hoist it up right under your chin. Take two steps forward, small steps, and we're gonna stab Scott. I would love to see two pros go at it. Okay. Let me just, let me just get out of your way. Sure. Okay. Hey! Yeah! Hey! The ultimate purpose of practice is to perfect ourselves, body, mind, and spirit. The key to this martial art is to learn about yourself, God, and divine forces. And through studying and beautiful movements of this art, you come to understand the beauty of the universe. The last few days have been exhausting, but amazing. I got to use a spear. I attended a tea ceremony. I did drumming to call the gods. And I learned that Shintoism isn't a religion, it's a way of life. And this way of life is about respecting our connection with nature and the universe.